Lately, I've been reflecting upon something that I'd like to share with you publicly, because some of this is going to be personal. And that is, I, I suspect, and I guess this is just a suspicion on my part, maybe it's a projection, maybe it's a judgment on my part, but I suspect most couples really don't know how to create deep intimacy with one another. Intimacy, and while I didn't coin the following phrase, intimacy means into me you see. In other words, that way you can actually see inside a person's soul, that way you, you see who they are on the inside instead of the masks that most human beings wear on the outside. And yes, I do believe most human beings wear a mask, myself included. And I've often wondered, how do couples really connect with one another, their, know, one another on an emotional level? Oftentimes, intimacy is confused with the physical connection you have with someone, and certainly when you connect with someone on a physical level, and when I'm talking about, quite frankly, a sexual level, it can certainly feel like you're, you, you really know who they are. You might feel that way in the moment. In fact, it's been interesting. I've heard... Uh, I recall shortly after my divorce and I was um, dating and I was physical with a woman and this particular woman I remember that when we were physical together it felt like a sense of home. It felt, there was a, a sense of like this just felt like home while we were together. And it's interesting, as when I've shifted to becoming a dating coach, when I mean by shifted, I used to be in the insurance business, now I'm a dating relationship coach. Uh, and. I've spoken to women who have said that men have said the same thing to them, that being physical woman with a woman feels like being home. And I'm like, I thought I only knew about that. And it's written. anyway, I feel like I'm babbling here for a second. On a physical level, many men might feel like that's genuine love because when your body is feeling tingly and your body is connecting on so many different levels, it can feel like you're really connected to another human being. I mean, technically, when you're in intercourse, you're actually connected to another human being, but that's on the physical level. I think what so many couples are missing in relationship is really connecting on that emotional level, that level of I see you, that level of I genuinely care about you, that level of your best interests, your interests are just as important to me as my own interests, that level of trust, that level of deep commitment. And I've often wonder how do we get there as human beings? How do we get to that place? Because the physical part is rather easy. In fact, these days, the physical part is the easiest part because when we think of attraction, we often think of it from a physical level. Certainly there's deeper levels of attraction. There's a emotional attraction. There's intellectual attraction. There's even that attraction of being attracted to someone because they are creative or those people that are the protector types. These are multiple different types of attraction that exists out there. But that's merely attraction. How do we go below the surface as I talk about my relationship iceberg? How do we get to that level of really connecting with another human being on that emotional level? That level where you, you feel comfortable to say almost anything to your partner. In fact, you feel so comfortable that you could tell them your deepest, darkest secret. How do we make that happen is something that I contemplate frequently. So I want to share something personal with you all. Um, and it's something my girlfriend said to me yesterday. She says, I like your woo-woo-ness. I like your woo-woo-ness. And what she means by that is she likes that I've studied relationships. I've studied spirituality. I've studied personal development and self-help work. I've studied it to actually become what I think is a better human being or a more evolved human being or a more awakened human being because I, I recognize that in a significant part of my life I was rather unconscious to simply the concept of awareness, being aware of my thoughts, being aware of my feelings, being connected to my own thoughts, being connected to my own feelings, outside of the mask that I wore for a significant part of my life. And I suspect many men experience this as well as many women experience this, operating from the facade of who they are instead of the core of who they are. And I think one of the things I appreciate in this relationship more than anything, in fact, I said this to her yesterday, 
what I appreciate more than anything is I feel safe enough to just be who I am, warts and all. Warts and all, that's kind of funny. What I mean to say is, I don't feel like I have to play the game of hiding behind the strength of masculinity so I don't present, present, present weakness. I share my insecurities, I share some of my fears with her. And we talk about it, we put it to the light. She talks about her fears and insecurities with me, whether it's in our own individuality or even within our relationship. And that's one way to build real connection with a partner, to be vulnerable, to be authentic, to be transparent with a person, to really step into that feeling of like, I'm with a really good friend, I'm with my best friend. I know there's a meme that says uh, something along the line of, you know, the best relationships are friendships on fire. And what I think that means is that you can be with your best friend and at the same time you have that passionate connection with them. And I think one of the best ways to get there is to start by being vulnerable, authentic, and transparent with your partner. Now I'm going to share something that's very, I'm going to, it's not, to the extent that it's private between the two of us, we were sharing last night, wouldn't it be great if the world could do what we do? So I want to share what this is. So since we began our relationship, every once in a while we do something called camping. <laughs> and what we do is we create, or I, and this was my idea, and I didn't learn it, I didn't learn, I learned this from some other people. I've learned it from a group of people who shared this with me, but what we do is I lay out on the, a blanket on the floor and I, I build it up so it's very cushiony and very comfy with fluffy pillows and stuff like that. And we spend half a day on the floor in my living room just connecting with one another. Now sometimes we use plant-based medicine to connect, sometimes it's just the two of us, but we really, we spend half a day, we, we turn off the phones, turn off the phones, and just sit and connect with one another and talk about things that matter to us in our lives and all the nooks and crannies of where our thoughts go each and every day. Did you know that the average human being has somewhere between 12 and 60,000 thoughts a day? 12 to 60,000 thoughts. And by the way, from what I understand, 80% of them are negative. And 80% of those negative ones are re or no, I think 95% of those negative ones are reoccurring ones. So we just sit and connect with one another. Now there's a book that I highly recommend you all check out. It's called How to Make Love All the Time by Barbara DeAngelis. And she creates these simple little ways that you can connect with your partner. There's a the table of contents. You know what, and I'm sharing with you one of ours, but here's one. The love letter technique. The secret cla sexual classroom technique. You know, your hidden power of sexual energy. Now, I mean, some of this is, well, that's the bedroom stuff. Um, how to tell if you're with the right person. Letting go of, letting go of love. I mean, there's how to use this technique to make love all the time, the first aid technique, all these things in this book, I highly recommend you checking out. And I'm offering what she and I do as a suggestion. And you, since my audience is women mostly, you can create this for your partner. And that's simply making a request that you spend time just really connecting with one another. You shut off the world, you sit, I mean, the, uh, nesting is what we call this, nesting with each other and just connecting with one another. And the plant-based medicine takes some of the edge off, but it's just a way not to make it sexual. This is not a sexual thing. This is about creating deep intimacy with your partner, deep connection with your partner, taking time out of your week if you can do it once a week or once a month, whatever it is, to just sit and be together. What's cool about nesting is we, we, we move in all kinds of different positions throughout the, the day. It's just kind of like thinking, we, we, I, I think out loud, you know, just some of the thoughts and we just unpack them together and we have fun together. And it's a great way to build real deep intimacy with your partner by being vulnerable, by being authentic, by being transparent. And so we even had this idea of creating like a nesting bed and maybe selling it on Amazon or something like that because we both agreed 
We'd never experienced this before in any of our previous relationships. And we suspect a lot of couples probably don't know genuine intimacy outside of the physical realm. And I'm here to invite it into the emotional realm. And I hope just this offering today might create a shift in your existing relationship or it might plant to see that you use this in a future relationship. And if you're single and looking for love, I invite you to attract in that beautiful relationship like what I think I have. God, universe, spirit, I'm open and receptive to love. I invite in a love where we can be vulnerable, authentic, and transparent with one another. I invite in that love where we have that mutual chemistry for one another. And we have that ability to be open with each other on a communication level. And we can play and dance in that realm of vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. And we can blend our lives together at some point. And we also share the deep values that allow us to really connect with one another. And we develop the deep roots of trust through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building school skills, both in our personal and our professional life. And lastly, that deep intimacy that isn't just physical, it's emotional as well. And God, universe, spirit, I invite that into my life. That's my invitation for all of you to invite in that kind of relationship. Is it gonna work? Hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Give it a shot. See if something can shift between you and your partner by starting to block out time during the week, during the month, where you really connect and just be with one another. And I hope that helps your relationship or your future relationship. All right, if you had, va if, listen, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, post a comment below. If you found value in this, please uh, tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching, coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.